Okay, let's open our Bibles this afternoon to 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 22. First Kings 22, and uh, we're going to look in verse 31 to verse 34, not doing Ephesians this afternoon, we actually did uh, that this morning, so we'll have it, so First Kings 22, verse 31 to verse 34. Okay, 1 Kings 22, verse 31 uh, reads, uh, But the king of Syria commanded his thirty and two captains that had rule over his chariots, saying, Fight neither with small nor great, uh, save only with the king of Israel. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, they, that they said, Surely it is the king of Israel. And they turned aside to fight against him, and Jehoshaphat cried out, and it came to pass when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, that they turned back from pursuing him. Verse 34, And a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Wherefore he said unto the driver of his chariot, Turn thine hand and carry, out, carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for being able to look at these things this afternoon. And, uh, Lord, uh, see, as always, uh, even with events that happened uh, thousands of years ago, uh, Lord, uh, that uh, there is very much relevance for our lives today. And so, Father, I just do, Lord, uh, pray as uh, we delve into the riches of your word that you would lead and guide there. Uh, Lord, help us to get for our own lives, what we need to get. And Father, I thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, now, uh, in this particular instance where we're looking at here a time where uh, the kingdom of Israel, or the nation of Israel, was divided into two kingdoms, uh, the kingdom of Judah, uh, where Jehoshaphat was, uh, was king, and, uh, and the northern kingdom, where Ahab was king of the, uh, the ten northern tribes. And so... Uh, uh, this particular time is, is after uh, the great drought uh, of, um, of the time of Ahab that I mentioned uh, during Sunday school this morning. And uh, uh, the Lord had, uh, at that time, after the drought, proclaimed judgment on Ahab and his, and his wife and family. However, because Ahab uh, repented of a fashion, uh, the Lord had mercy on him and, uh, and didn't bring... Uh, all of the judgment on, on Ahab in, the, in his own time uh, when he was alive. But nonetheless, uh, the time came for Ahab to, uh, to die in battle. And uh, it was his appointed time. And so uh, uh, at this particular time, you know, after, after the drought, uh, the Syrians had come up against Israel in Samaria. And uh, the Lord granted the Jews uh, to have uh, victory. Uh, the Jews of the northern kingdom to have a couple of great victories. Uh, because uh, you know, the Syrians, they were uh, you know, wicked people and they were oppressing the, the Jews. And so, and so God gave them victory. Uh, but, but in this particular battle, we see uh, the end of Ahab. Now, um, at, the, at this particular time where, where the Jews, uh, including Jehoshaphat in the southern kingdom of Judah, went uh, up together with Israel to battle, uh, we see that... Uh, Jehoshaphat had gone to the king of uh, Israel, Ahab, and uh, they'd made peace together. They'd made peace. And so Ahab asked, if, uh, asked Jehoshaphat if he would go into battle with, uh, with him. And Jehoshaphat replied, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. Now, um, in a general sense, in reality, uh, you know, when you look at the history of Israel, that's true. Uh, however, uh, there was a big difference between uh, the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel in respect of their, their time before their walk before the Lord, how they treated the Lord. And so uh, when Jehoshaphat, though, um, made this big mistake of going with Ahab, uh, Jehoshaphat said, uh, 
uh, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll go together into battle. However, uh, I, I inquire, I pray thee of the word of the Lord today. And so uh, Ahab calls his, uh, his false prophets together, and they all go, yeah, yeah, go up, king, and yeah, you're going you're gonna to have the victory, and so forth. And, and, uh, and, and Jehoshaphat's a bit uncomfortable with the words of these false prophets. He could see that they weren't uh, telling the truth. And, uh, and he said, uh, is there not a prophet uh, of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? Uh, that's in uh, verse 7 of 1 Kings 22. And uh, there was one prophet by the name of Micaiah, Micaiah who, uh, the son of Imla, whom Ahab had put into jail. And Ahab didn't like him because he would never prophesy good of, of Ahab. And uh, so finally, uh, you know, uh, Jehoshaphat uh, convinces uh, Ahab to get, the, get this prophet in, so he does. And, and uh, the result, uh, the, uh, the prophet uh, prophesied about Ahab and said uh, that the Lord, the Lord had said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And it goes on from there. And so, uh, you know, Ahab goes, See, I told you he wasn't going to prophesy anything good. And so off they go to battle. And uh, Ahab said to Jehoshaphat that he himself, Ahab, uh, would disguise himself. He wouldn't go in his kingly robes. Uh, but Jehoshaphat was to still go in his kingly robes. And uh, so the king of Assyria, uh, king of Syria, as we see there in verse uh, number, uh, where are we, verse number 31, the king of Syria, if you're looking there at your Bible, uh, it says the king of Syria commanded his 32 captains that had rule over his chariot, saying, fight neither with small nor great, save only with the king of Israel. And so uh, the king of Syria said to his, his captains, okay, you look out for the king of Israel, uh, Ahab, that's the one we're after. Uh, not, not looking for a small or great anybody, but just not anybody else except the king of Israel. And, uh, and so you can just picture the scenario. Uh, the, uh, the, the Jews will go into battle and, and Jehoshaphat's the only one dressed as a king. And so as we saw in our text verses, naturally, uh, when they saw him, in verse number 32, when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, they said, surely this is the king of Israel. It is the king of Israel. And so they, they turned aside to fight against him and, and Jehoshaphat cried out. So uh, it says there that uh, uh, when it came to pass, the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel. They, they turned back from pursuing him. So the Lord delivered him. The Lord allowed him to, to get out of that sticky situation. Now, uh, the next verse, uh, of course, uh, down there in verse number 34, it says, a certain man drew a bow at a venture. A certain man drew a bow at a venture. And, uh, and, and, the, and we see that that arrow uh, went between the joints of the harness of the king of Israel. This is the one that's disguised. He's not dressed as a king. Uh, he's just looked like an ordinary, uh, I guess like an ordinary soldier uh, in, the, in the army there. But that arrow that was just drawn at a venture, it's, in other words, not, wasn't particularly aimed at anybody. Uh, it, it found its mark. It was it was Ahab's time, and uh, and he and he, uh, he he got these uh, the driver of his chariot to to go back to back to Samaria, and uh, and where we died. Now I want to look at uh, three people here in this in this uh, in this uh, passage. First of all, Jehoshaphat. Secondly, Ahab, uh, sorry, Ahab first, and then Jehoshaphat, and then finally the man that drew the bow, uh, drew the arrow at adventure, the bow at adventure. And, you know, we can draw truths from all three of these guys, all three of these men, um, that apply to our lives uh, from different angles, obviously. And uh, the first lesson we can learn uh, is what happened with Ahab. Ahab, it, it, no, it's, it's no matter how hard Ahab tried to hide uh, who he was, uh, that arrow still found its mark. It still found its mark. And, uh, you know, for us in our lives, uh, we can, what we can learn from Ahab is this. It doesn't matter how hard we try in our lives to hide from the Lord in whatever part of our life, uh, it will never work. Uh, yeah, it will never be successful. Ahab had disguised himself, but it was all to no avail as the, as the arrow that was shot randomly, at no one in particular, found its mark. And uh, when it is time in life for whatever, uh, whatever the situation may be in life, uh, it's time. 
uh, when the Lord needs to deal with us in our lives about something, whatever it be, or the Lord needs to lead us uh, in a certain path, uh, and we're reluctant and we're trying to resist God in our lives from what He knows is a blessing for our lives and, and right for our lives, it makes no difference how hard we try. Uh, you know, the Lord is, is still going to work in our lives to show clearly what He wants, regardless of whether we want it or not. And uh, God knows where we are all at, uh, no matter how hard we try to avoid what the Lord wants at any time. And the arrow of God's Word will always find its mark as the Lord shows us His will for our lives. And so people, you know, in our hearts, we, we need to purpose in our hearts to serve the Lord in our lives, regardless of whether it is our desire to do so or not. And I'm not talking about, when I say about serving God in our lives, whether it's our will, whether in, in serving God according to His will, whether it's our desire or not, I'm not necessarily talking about, okay, you must come into the church and do this ministry or that ministry. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. While, of course, obviously, the Lord sometimes wants things in our lives for us to do. Sometimes He wants, uh, you know, wants us to serve Him in some way in a ministry. Yes, that's true. But generally, they're just in our lives. Whatever, you know, whatever God wants in our lives, it's important that we, we accept what God wants. Because... You know, that is the path to victory. It, it doesn't work to try to be, a, to be an Ahab and disguise ourselves and pretend to be something we're not or, uh, or try to get away from, from, from what, uh, what will happen. We, we need to let God be God in our lives. Uh, you know, uh, the prophet Jonah was given one main assignment uh, in the Old Testament times, which was approximately about 770 to 750 BC at the time of Jonah. And that was to go and preach against the wickedness of the people of Nineveh. And we know he tried to hide from God by running away and trying to get into the ship and go as far away from, uh, from, uh, from where he was supposed to go as possible. Uh, he was trying to go to Tarshish, which at that time was looked at as pretty much the end of the, end of the world. So much, uh, so far, like normal civilization. And what ended up happening? God gave him a ride to where he needed to go in accommodation that was less than lower class. I um, mean, in the stomach of the whale, and that's what it's called in, in uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 40, it was a whale, according to the word of God. And so, off he marched to do as he was told to do. He went off to Nineveh and preached against Nineveh. But you know, Jonah hated the Ninevites because of all of the cruelty that they had inflicted on his people. That's why he went in the opposite direction, because he knew that God is merciful. He knew that God would forgive them if they truly, um, you know, truly repented of their evil. And um, and so, as the story goes, and as we know what happened, uh, in fact, when he went and preached there in Nineveh, they did, they did repent, and and the Lord had mercy on them for, for a period of time until they went back to where they were again later on. So, what does it say in Psalm 139? It says, "Whither shall I go from Thy Spirit, or whither shall I flee from Thy presence? If I ascend up to heaven." Thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. And so Jonah tried hard to flee from the presence of the Lord, uh, as it says in Jonah 3, 1 verse 3, but it didn't work. And so people, whether it be Jonah, Ahab, or us, we cannot hide from the Lord. We cannot hide from the Lord. It's not possible. And so we must purpose in our hearts to give our lives to the Lord. And sometimes that, that will bring challenges which we look at and think, that really goes against the grain for what I really feel is right in my life. But God knows what's best. I, I wonder how many Christians will get to heaven and the Lord will show them what He's... Uh, saved them from it, and I don't mean their, their eternity, I don't mean being saved from their sins and from hell, I mean as, as Christians, as believers, as born again believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, when we get to heaven and the Lord says, now you remember that time here where you really didn't want this to be the case, now have a look at what would have happened, let, let me tell you what would have happened if you'd forced that, and, and, and you know, God will you know, be able to show us 
because by that time, obviously, uh, we'll be uh, we'll be in our incorruptible bodies and we'll be able to understand things a whole lot better. And God shows us what He's what He's kept us from in those areas that we push so stubbornly towards wanting our way and not His way. And, and He's kept us from those things. Uh, you know. Uh, if I sit and think about it, I'm sure I can think of lots of times where I've tried to push stubbornly towards something and the Lord's going, no, I'm, I'm telling you no. But, but I kept pushing and until the Lord finally said no. <laughs> how, how, what don't you understand about the word no? And so um, when we get to heaven, we'll understand that a whole lot more by and by. And so... Uh, so the question is, the Lord's arrow will always hit its mark, but will we respond to his leading? Now, this obviously also applies to, the, to those that don't know the Lord, those that aren't saved, those that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour. You know, uh, uh, at different times, God gives us opportunities to know the truth. And we know that the, uh, the Word of God is described as the sword of the Spirit. It, it, it's uh, like a two-edged sword. It, it penetrates, it, it digs, uh, it goes in, it hurts. And, uh, and you know, uh, I gave my testimony last week. You know, I prayed as a 12-year-old, but obviously did not really understand it. And from a heart, from a heartfelt conviction. And, uh, and it was only when I was in my early 20s that, that, that God finally got a hold of my heart where it really convicted me. And, uh, you know... Uh, uh, those friends of mine that I've that I've mentioned before, uh, they used to they used to, they used to follow me around. <laughs> Occasionally, they they call my mother and say, "Where you know where's Graham?" And, and so they they'd catch up with me wherever. They caught up with me in Rockhampton one time, and I was really uncomfortable. Why? Because I knew that I was not um, living a life that would portray a Christian. Or I, I just knew that, that that I saw these guys. And that, that equaled God, and and it bothered me. And uh, you know they go, oh, can I have a drink of water? And they look in the fridge and they go, oh yeah, okay, right. Eh? And and so, you know, uh, I was trying to hide from God. Whenever that, it's like I was trying to hide from God. When those guys had come around, uh, the conscience is really bad. The conscience is really bad. And so, uh, you know, people. It came a time uh, later on down there in Brisbane, back in Brisbane, where where the Lord put his finger on the chest and sort of said, hey, Graham, it's time. It's like an arrow. The Lord's saying, you know, uh, it's time for you to do something about your life. And so, you know, people don't try to hide from God. And so if, if uh, you know, we have everyone that's here this, this afternoon, everyone knows the Lord Jesus Christ is their Savior, but if you're watching on, on the internet this afternoon, or this evening, if you're watching it later, whatever the case may be, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, you know, uh, you are missing the most important thing for your whole life. God's eternal purpose is for you to be saved. It's not for you to have a successful physical life. Uh, while it's good to have a good life, uh, it's nothing in comparison to eternity if you without the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So, second person to consider this afternoon is this, is Jehoshaphat. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 22 and have a look there in those two verses, verse 42 and 43. 1 Kings 22, verse 42 and 43. It reads there in verse 42, Jehoshaphat was 30 and 5 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 20 and 5 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Azubah, the daughter of Sheli. And he walked in all the ways of, his, of Asa, his father, and he turned not aside from doing it, doing that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away, for the people offered and burnt incense yet in the high places. Now, I mentioned, I mentioned this guy this morning uh, in Sunday school. I, uh, I mentioned a bit about Jehoshaphat and, uh, and uh, Josiah and Hezekiah. And, uh, and what we're seeing here is what I mentioned this morning. In Sunday school, which obviously you know the uh, people on, on the net or in the, even from main service didn't hear, we see here where Jehoshaphat he was doing that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. It literally says that there. But nevertheless, there was a nevertheless there. 
or a but. He, he didn't have all. He didn't have everything in order, and uh, and so uh, you know the Lord's the Lord's saying, well, you know, he was a pretty good dude. You know, he 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 uh, pretty much followed me from the heart, but he didn't go all the way. Now, what are we going to see here with Jehoshaphat? What's the lesson we can learn from Jehoshaphat's life at this time, and, and from his life in general? The the more we live for the Lord, the more we let God get rid of the high places in our lives which are not right in His eyes, the, the, the more that those things are, get, are out, the more God will bless us in our lives, the more the Lord will lead us in our lives. And I'm not talking about physical riches. I'm talking about, uh, as, as Paul said this morning, for us in the age of grace, he said, grace and peace be unto you. And that was a greeting that he gave to all the Gentile uh, churches that he wrote to under the inspiration of God. That was the blessing he gave, or sorry, the, uh, the greeting he gave to, to Timothy and to Titus and the pastoral epistles and added in the word mercy as well, as I mentioned this morning. But the thing is, the more we let the Holy Spirit of God work in our lives as Christians, um, as born again believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, the more we let the Holy Spirit of God work in this vessel, in the temple of the Holy Ghost, the more he can get rid of those high places in our hearts and the more, uh, the more of the grace, the more of the peace of God, the more of the mercy of God we are going to see in our lives. And so here's Jehoshaphat, he's hanging around with the wrong company. He's hanging around with Ahab. And look, he doesn't have to be at war with him. Uh, and uh, it might be, might be nice to have peace with the, with the rest of his fellow countrymen, ultimately, but at the same time, it doesn't mean you have to hang around them. And, and look, you know, when we go out here into the world in our day-by-day -day lives, uh, you, you know, we're in the world, but we're not of it. Uh, evil communications corrupt good manners, is what the scriptures tell us. And, uh, and, you know, we are to be mindful of our lives who we associate with, uh, because of the influence that it has on our lives. And we see that with Jehoshaphat. And uh, in uh, 2 Chronicles 18, verse 31, uh, it tells us that Jehoshaphat cried out at this time where he's in the battle. So this is a parallel account. Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him, and God moved them to depart from him. That's what it tells us in the Scriptures. And so, uh, so when he cried out here, when we're looking at 1 Kings 22, uh, where Jehoshaphat cried out, verse uh, 32 here in this chapter. Uh, the parallel account tells us that it was God that moved the Syrians to depart from him. God had mercy on him. Despite the fact that Jehoshaphat was with the wrong crowd. He was fighting the battles of a wicked king. Helping fight the battles of a wicked king. Uh, People, as born-again believers, be careful what you do in this life as one of God's children. Evil communications do corrupt good manners. And uh, I go over to 2 Chronicles chapter 19. 2 Chronicles 19. Let's have a look at something here also in relation to, to Jehoshaphat. 2 Chronicles 19. And uh, verses 1 to 4. Now this is where, uh, in the parallel account, you know, like I've already mentioned, uh, there's a parallel account of, the, of this time. This is after the battle. First Chronicles, sorry, Second Chronicles 19, verse 1 to 4. It says, And Jehoshaphat, king of, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace in Jerusalem. What a mouthful. Here he is. He's cried out in battle. God's moved the enemy to depart from him. That's the mercy of God. And he returns in peace to Jerusalem. Can you imagine getting back to Jerusalem? What was in Jerusalem? The temple. The place of worship. There's a picture of a Christian that's been hanging out with the wrong crowd, getting themselves in trouble. And they realise it. They cry out to God. God delivers them. And they know what they've got to do. They've got to get right back. You know, they're going to get back into their walk with the Lord. There's a great picture of that. And, uh, and if, if that's you this afternoon, if you're a born-again believer, you're watching out there uh, in, on the internet, let me say this to you. If your life is not what it ought to be as a born-again believer, 
Uh, if you've been hanging out in the wrong areas and the wrong crowd and everything else, uh, you need to get back in your walk with the Lord and get back in the church. A good church I'm talking about. And you need to get back in fellowship with the Lord day by day and you walk with Him. Get back into the Scriptures. How's your Bible reading going? Does, this, does the Word of God speak to your heart when you, when you, when you read it? Do you let the Holy Spirit of God speak to you? Uh, and that's what I see there when I look at verse number 1. Verse number 2, it says, And Jehu the son of Hanani, uh, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from the Lord. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, in that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land, and hast prepared thine heart to seek God. And, Jeru and Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem, and he went out again, through the people from Beersheba to Mount Ephraim and brought them back unto the Lord God, their fathers. So, so Jehoshaphat not, not only went back in peace to the center of worship, the place where he should be worshiping the Lord, but he also went out uh, and, and tried to influence others. So in other words, he, he learned a lesson from that experience. He learned a lesson from that experience. He, uh, he not only changed his own life, he not only learned a lesson for his own life, but he tried to influence others for good before the Lord. Praise the Lord for that. And, uh, but it was with limited success. And uh, like I said this morning in Sunday school, with, to compare Jehoshaphat with uh, Hezekiah and Josiah, uh, Hezekiah and Josiah were two kings that not only did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, but they did it according as David their father had done. And you know, I, I might labour on this a little bit, I might speak, bring this up every so often, but there's a great truth in this. And I really believe it's a great truth for our life as a Christian. It's very easy to let our guard down in just little things, and those little things become bigger and bigger and bigger. For example, what, is the, what, it, uh, what does it say in the Scriptures? What does the Lord say? A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. That's how it starts. Christian, don't let your guard down. Especially, you look at the world around us. Uh, is, it, is the world heading for a, a, a great earthly utopia? No, it's not. It's going in the opposite direction. And everybody, even those that don't believe on the Lord, are wondering what on earth is going to happen in this, in, this, in this world. Now is the time to not go, oh, feeling a bit discouraged, so I'll just let my guard down a little bit, and I'll just do a little bit of this, a little, and the devil will go, gotcha. And that little bit of leaven gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden you look back and you go, whoa, you, find, you see how far down the road you've gone and it's hard to get back. If you go too far, it's hard to get back in the right, in the right place before the Lord. Uh, but the, Lord's, the Lord is good. The Lord is gracious. He can, he can do it. But it's going to hurt more. It'll hurt you more to get back. It won't hurt the Lord. It'll hurt you. Uh, he's always willing and ready to do it, uh, but it's going to hurt. The further you get down the wrong path, the harder it is to get back to where you should be. Now the third one that we're going to look at uh, this afternoon is in 1 Kings uh, 22, verse 34. So go back to where we started. 1 Kings 22 and verse number 34. 1 Kings 22, verse 34. 1 Kings 22 and verse, oh, I'm in second here, sorry, my apologies. Uh, verse 34, it says, And a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Wherefore he said unto the driver of his chariot, Turn thine hand and carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. Now, uh, there's many pictures we can paint with that. A certain man. It doesn't say who it was. We have no idea who it was. But look at, look at the results uh, that it had uh, on Ahab. The arrow hit. Uh, and we know in the physical sense it, had, it led to his death. But let me make a comparison to us here in, in the spiritual sense. For our lives as Christians, it's very easy for us to draw a bow and do something and say something 
without thinking first, without taking thought first, without being careful first. And for that arrow to hit and cause a brother or a sister great hurt, great damage. We must, we must be careful. We must be careful. Uh, the more I go, the more I learn to be very reserved in what I say and what I do. Perhaps sometimes to the frustration of others, but nonetheless, um, we need to learn a lesson in that area. It's very, it's very important that we do. And so uh, this fellow, he drew a bow at a venture. And so uh, there's a few observations here with this guy. First thing is, like I've already said, we have no idea who he was except he was a Syrian. Uh, now the word venture apparently only appears twice in the, in the Word of God. Once here in 1 Kings 22, the other is in 2 Chronicles 18, which is the parallel account that we already looked at. Um, and so the second one in Chronicles is, is, the, is the second account of the same happening. Now, um, so there's only one account of the word of, you know, of, the, of that word venture uh, in, in, the word of, in the Word of God and what a result it was. So some, some more observations about him. Ahab was the one targeted by the Syrian king, but he wasn't found by the men deliberately searching for him. Uh, they were in the battlefield. Number two, no, sorry, number three, I should say, it doesn't indicate, does not indicate anywhere that the Syrians figured out at that time that Ahab had been crit critically shot. It doesn't say it anywhere. And third thing about this man that drew a bow at a venture is that he did not aim at anything in particular. He was just generally laying down some, you know, shooting some arrows, obviously in the general direction of the enemy, and that's all fine. But uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't aiming at anybody in particular. Now, uh, as we see, the word venture means uh, in simplicity, in other words, not aimed. And, and then all the arrows shot that day during the battle there was only one that really counted. And that was the, the arrow that got Ahab because that was the target of the king of Syria. It was not even aimed intentionally by the shooter uh, who, who it seems did not even know the result of the arrow. Now that goes back to what I was just saying. We never, never know what effect we can have on somebody else with what we say, with what we do. Sometimes we can say and do things uh, too quickly, like I was mentioning, and not realise what we're doing, the effect that it could have. And so uh, they had no idea, the Syrians had no idea out of all the arrows shot that day which one did the job. Uh, why? Because Ahab was disguised and looked like everybody else. Now. Let me, uh, let me use this as a, as a picture, a picture of Ahab being an unsafe person and the arrow being the word of God. Christian, we are to draw a bow at adventure with the arrows, using arrows of the word of God. We are to get the word of God out, we are to, 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 to shoot those arrows of the word of God as much as we can while we can. You know, the Lord gave the parable of the sower when he was on this earth. And, uh, you know, we know that some of the seed fell by the wayside, some, uh, and the fowls came down and got it, some fell in the stony places, some amongst the thorns, finally some in good ground. And, uh, you know, if this sower, we're, we're working on one of the farms around here in Budley, you know, in this region at the moment, he'd probably get the sack for wasting all of the seed because he only got, he only got one part of it you know, three, you know, three parts of it were in places that weren't profitable uh, and, the, uh, and there was some seed that went into the good ground. And we know the Lord was just doing a parable. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, that, that for us is a good picture. It doesn't matter whether we look at the ground where we're going to sow the seed of the Word of God. We don't, it doesn't matter whether we look at it and think, oh, boy, that looks like ground that's not fertile or it's rocky ground or... 
you wouldn't think that you know that it's got a chance of that seed uh, taking hold in the ground. But you know what? Man looks on the outward appearance, and God looks on the heart. Um, you know, I'm sure you've seen through the years some people that you would thought would never have got saved, but they are. But they are. And so, you know, the, the Syrian that shot that arrow at a venture probably never even knew uh, that it was the king of Israel that he shot. He probably didn't even see the arrow land. He's probably just going... And he's not even looking where, where, where they hit. Because he's too busy, you know, trying to get those arrows away and not get hit himself. He's just laying down a barrage of arrows. And it's the same for us. It's not a thing of saying, well, where's the fruit from what I've sown? You know, when we get to heaven, that's when you find out. The Lord, the Lord lets you know what, what happened with all of that, all that seed that you've sown in your life that you've never seen any result for. Isaiah 55, verse 11, well-known verse, we know it. It says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. It will not return unto the Lord void. Now, you stop and think, in relation to our theme, our 2021 theme, the eternal purpose of God. How important is sowing the seed in relation to that? It's vital. That's what it's all about. Get the word of God out. Let people hear the word of God. Well, we can still do that. You know, you stop and you think about the people down in Victoria, they've been locked down for how long? And uh, confined to home, you can only go from there to the shop and home again and all that sort of stuff. What opportunity do the, in the churches, they haven't been able to meet, they haven't been able to have services together, invite people in, etc., etc., etc. And we know from looking at the Word of God, what we've experienced in the last eight months or whatever it is, is peanuts in comparison to what will happen in the future. Brethren, we have an opportunity to sow the seed. Yes, we need to, be, we need to do it prayerfully. Yes, we need to ask God for further opportunities, uh, avenues to do it, where he knows that, that it would be effective or more effective or, or what he wants it to achieve in those particular places. We, we need to do it with prayer and supplication. But we are not to sit there and go, OK, there goes an arrow. Where did it go? What happened to it? Did it, did it get something result from it? No, just trust the Lord and let him bring uh, the results to us. If, 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 that, if that seed, when it, when it comes to fruition, when it, when it fruits, when it, when it takes root, I should say, if, that's, if that particular seed is to come back to us, well, praise the Lord. You know, like Tim, for example. Draw the bow at a venture. For it is the work of the Holy Spirit of God that will achieve what it is set out to do. Purpose to sow the seed of the word. Purpose to draw the bow at a venture with the word of God. You know, I, I, I love that I love that picture with that with that guy just drew a bow at a venture. Innocently. Well not innocently, but you know, just randomly. Wasn't aiming at anybody. He just wanted to do what his king had sent him out to do. People, that should be our heart. To just go out and do what our king, the king of kings and lord of lords, wants us to do. Not to be a Jehoshaphat that wants to do right before God but get mixed up with the wrong crowd. Not to be an Ahab and try to hide from God. But just get out there and draw that bow of the word of God and spread the word. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for being able to think on these things this afternoon. And Lord, uh, as we finish another day in your house, in the place that you've given to us to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord, I just do pray that as we go from here this afternoon that you would use your word to 
and speak to our hearts. Lord, may we not miss an opportunity to, to sow the Word of God this week. Lord, may we look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for the way that we are to, to walk before you this week, our part, the part of our race that is set before us that's, that's called this week. Lord, may we look to you to guide us each step of the way. And uh, Father, I thank you for what to do. And I ask you to pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you and good afternoon.